Good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are. I'm Sandra Reyes, and I'm part of the staff of LACNIC, and I welcome you to this uh, informative uh, uh, webinar. It's going to be in charge of Alicia Sukedi of uh, uh, LACNIC2 and Cal Clara Cremon, Assistant of Cooperation Projects. So before we go any further with Alessia and uh, Clara, let me tell you quickly what uh, the dynamics will be for those of you connecting for the first time. We're going to have uh, interpretation, English and Portuguese, so you'll have access to interpretation uh, on the toolbar there. In and uh, we are going to be meeting for an hour. And during the presentation, you'll have a chance to ask questions in the Q&R panel. We're going to give, uh, uh, we're going to allow for some minutes uh, to about 15 minutes at the end uh, to answer questions. Let me also tell you that this webinar will be recorded and in a few days, we will share the uh, recording. So without further ado, let me give the floor to Alessia. Alessia, please take the floor. Thank you, Sandra. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this uh, 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 time that we have on presentations and uh, consultations for FRIDA 2024. Um, we're going to approach a number of uh, issues and hopefully at the end, will be able to answer any questions you may have about uh, the application model uh, and uh, themes, uh, questions that you may have and recommendations uh, in general. So first of all, let me start by telling you very briefly, for those of you who are not familiar with the FRIDA program, let me tell you some uh, general characteristics. FRIDA is the program to, for the support of projects, initiatives, and solutions uh, aimed at strengthening the internet in the region, as well as to favor and promote an open, stable, free, and uh, secure internet. So we hold an annual open and public call coordinated by LACNIC and uh, an external uh, jury uh, with uh, regional experts, uh, depending on the access of each call. In the 2024 edition, we have our jury includes Andres Lombana Bermudez, Antonio Moreiras, Arturo Servin, Carolina Cofre, and Ilan Melendez, whom uh, we thank a lot for the participation, for the time they devote. And we also want to thank the members of the juries of previous um, instances that have also contributed a lot in the program. Frida is 20 years old. It was created 20 years ago. And in this period, we have supported 186 projects under different modalities, grants, prices and scale-ups with a contribution of almost $3 million in the period going from the beginning in 2004 to 2023, including 2023. In this period, we had international partners such as IDRC Canada, the Internet Society, the A Swedish Agency, for uh, cooperation and seed alliance. At present, it receives contributions and is coordinated by LACNIC. FRIDA has two modalities, as uh, you many of you may be aware. On the one hand, we have the grants, and on the other, the prices. And uh, later on, we'll address uh, the support lines. In the case of grants, the idea is to provide funding of up to $30,000. And it is also important to highlight that uh, you have a technical support to the projects uh, throughout uh, the duration of the projects uh, that can extend no, no longer than 12 months. On the other hand, the prices uh, highlight projects that are either underway or completed, presenting impact um, evidence and uh, outcomes providing 
financial recognition of $10,000. In the case of these uh, two main modalities, it is important to state that the grants are for projects that are starting and that through the FRIDA program may uh, um, start. While in the case of prices, the projects are typically underway, have been completed, or are, that are capable of showing uh, our results. And finally, starting in 2023, we have the non-financial technical support line. This line seeks to approach a number of needs that have been identified in the applicant organizations that uh, manifest their interest for being considered for this line, such as developing partnerships, access to knowledge and uh, uh, capacity building, feedback um, uh, on uh, the uh, working guidelines and the initiatives of the organizations and advice for specific projects uh, within the uh, line of work. In this case, in the case of non-financial technical support line, when uh, the applicants uh, apply for grants uh, or prices, the applicants are asked to point out whether they are interested in being considered for this line. Of course, if they are not selected for either grants or prices. Frida has uh, many categories of beneficiaries. Here we, all, we mentioned some of them, including uh, technical actors of the third, uh, such as operators, IXPs, NOGs, or other actors of technical community in the academia, universities, research centers, working groups, experts. In this specific case, we will mention later on some comments about the groups, the working groups, or experts on uh, different uh, themes. Also, civil society actors such as associations, cooperatives, uh, or others, uh, public or and or government entities and private uh, entities or companies. Among the beneficiaries, well, we, we must point out that uh, it is not a requirement to have a legal to be a legal person or having created a legal organization this is has to do with what we mentioned earlier about the possibility to uh, for for groups of experts or working groups to apply if they are selected then they must receive the funds through a partner entity that has a legal person and that will sign the grant agreement with LACNIC. At present, in the 2024 edition, we have four thematic categories. The program is always organized around thematic categories that also have specific thematic access First, stability and security of the internet, connectivity and access to the internet, free and open um, uh, internet, artificial intelligence applied to the internet and the networks. This fourth category was defined uh, uh, when the, the program uh, uh, celebrated its 20th anniversary in LACNIC 41 in Panama in May. And now we're going to briefly tell you some of uh, its characteristics. In the case of internet stability and security, the idea is to, is, uh, to help projects promoting this through four thematic axes with specific objectives. And they also include specific topics. On the one hand, network architecture and operations, traffic engineering and interconnection, cryptography, security and resilience, and future development of the internet. This thematic category is one of the thematic categories aside from uh, uh, artificial intelligence applied to the internet and networks with more technical characteristics. On the other hand, 
under stability and security, we have a subcategory, the use and uh, application of blockchain for stability and security of the internet. This is a broad subcategory where you may we may receive uh, either research projects such as field studies, developing proofs of concept and, and or prototypes as well, uh, as long as they present uh, practical goals and original specific results. In this case, the idea too is that the projects that are supported may seek results that may contribute either to a concrete, a specific practical solution and or to develop knowledge that may be of use uh, to expand and promote the development of this theme in the region. Another thematic category is connectivity and access to the internet. The idea is to support projects on three thematic axes. On the one hand, those that seek to favor connectivity in areas that lack connectivity. Second, to promote the quality of access and to improve the quality of access and to uh, promote uh, the ISPs at a regional level. Then we have uh, the open and free internet that focuses on two thematic areas, into the internet and human rights and uh, digital inclusion at a regional level. In this case, the idea is uh, to um, include a social dimension in uh, the uh, study and the project. And fourth, uh, as I said earlier, the thematic category and the use and application of intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence in the internet and the networks seeks to promote and support projects related to AI and to the use of uh, machine learning in technical areas such as uh, traffic management, security, resilience, internet operations, and or the uh, demand generated. And in this case too, the idea is that the projects may incorporate an ethical dim dimension in their study and development. In this case, given that it's a thematic, uh, a new uh, thematic uh, um, you, you, may, you may present in the subcategories of blockchain, you may have projects such as uh, case studies, developing proofs of concept, concept uh, prototypes, etc. With regard to the general characteristics of uh, the applications, there are some specific issues that need to be considered. First of all, there's a possibility to apply with more than one project. That is, in the same category or in different uh, categories. And uh, you also have an opportunity to apply in modalities of grants, uh, awards, or both. So the same organization or a group of organizations can apply with a certain project or idea to be developed uh, as grants and also to apply with an initiative where they already have a uh, specific results for awards and another relevant thing is that the categories and the thematic uh, access are broad but they have specific goals and descriptions and it's important to consider that when applying the general application requirements for this initial phase this phase is from may 19th through to june 28th this is the initial phase which we'll be describing later on this is a simplified application so it's important to consider what are the overall application requirements one is how this is related to the objectives of the FIDA program, the mission of FIDA's program to favor the strengthening and the development of the internet and an open 
stable, free, and secure internet. It should also belong to one of the categories of beneficiaries, specifically the organization responsible for the project. Then the location and development of these activities should be in Latin America and the Caribbean, specifically in the territories that are part of the 23 coverage areas of LACNIC. And this proposal should also be focused on one of such territories, depending on the project. The information in this context can be found in the description of the project, which has been published in the website of the FRIDA program and also in LACNIC's website. Fourthly, the application should be regarding one of the four thematic axes or subcategories in the case of stability and security. And finally, how this is related to the specific requirements in terms of the duration. This is for the subsidies. The maximum duration is 12 months. And also a maximum request of 30,000 US dollars to Frida and also regarding the open and pre development. Regarding the application process, as I was saying a while ago, there are two stages. The first stage is the current stage. This is what we call a simplified initial application, which is open until June the 28th. And there's a second stage where the pre-selected projects, the shortlisted projects, will be presented in August. And there, the complete project should be then presented. The entire project includes the same fields as those required in the initial stage, but these are more e extended descriptions. During this second stage, the second stage is from August 5th to August 26th, 2024. Both stages are then assessed on the basis of the same criteria. N as regards the evaluation process, during the first stage, there is an internal screening process which then determines whether this application complies with the overall requirements, which are the five points I mentioned earlier on. And if that is the case, it is then assessed by the jury, which then determines whether this application is related to the criteria that were pre-established. There are first order and second order criteria. Following that, the projects are then shortlisted, the ones that are that pass on to the second stage. During the second stage, the applications are assessed in depth. And namely, these are those proposals that were selected. A score is assigned to these assessments, following that a final ranking is established. Here, the projects are selected, the ones that will be supported through subsidies or, or through awards, and also the option for non-financial support. This is a non-financial -tech, non technical support line. And the jury then determines, as I was saying, which are those projects that have been selected. Regarding the evaluation criteria of the applications, there are two categories. One is a first order criteria. These are grouped in three different areas. One is the relevance and applicability of the proposal. The score for this item is 35%. Secondly, the impact and the expected or obtained results. This is a score of 40% of the overall score. And thirdly, continuity, sustainability, and replicability of this proposal, which has a score of 25% of the overall score. 
the second order criteria are assessed positively. It is important to highlight that this is a qualitative assessment. Firstly, the innovative nature of the proposal. Secondly, inclusion, including the gender perspective. And thirdly, that these are associated to the sustainable development goals and reference should be made to which goals this proposal is linked. During the current stage, the one we are in right now, this application process is quite straightforward. This requires accessing and registering in the platform, which is the one we have here on the screen, programafrida.net slash plataforma hyphen Frida hyphen postulaciones. In this initial application, you have to select the thematic category and access associated to the project. The subcategory, if this applies, then to identify the type of support which corresponds that this should be linked to the features of the project, the initiative, the idea. And thirdly, you have to fill out the relevant fields regarding this project. In this initial phase, once you have registered, the application form shows the following fields. Firstly, general data of the proposing organizations for this project, the title, a brief abstract of the project, maximum 100 words, and then specific fields regarding the first order evaluation criteria. The maximum amount of words for this field is 750 words in the different sub items. One is the relevance and applicability of the proposal, impact and expected results or obtained results and continuity sustainability and replicability of the proposals. Each of these macro criteria We'll see later on more on this topic. You can read this in the description of the project, and you can also read this in the application form. There you will see what is expected for each of these five criteria, first order evaluation criteria. And finally, there's an open field that has to do with the second order criteria. And the maximum words for this field is 100 words. For those projects that are then shortlisted, these will be available on August the 2nd. These applicants will then be invited to submit the complete proposal. In this case, you will have a longer application form, you don't need to add more generic types of information, but rather information regarding the project as such and in greater depth. There is a maximum amount of 16,000 words, including the non-mandatory fields. And another important point is that a detailed budget should, should also be submitted with this application. Here, you have the request for describing this project or initiative, the topic to be dealt with, and the maximum number of words is 2,000. Secondly, there's a field that has to do with the relevance and the applicability of this macro criterion that I mentioned, and the maximum amount of words here is 5,000 words, but 1,000 for each of the five items. These five items are challenges and needs 
of the region, how this project deals with these challenges and needs, B, the status of the knowledge, how the project contributes to the status of this knowledge, to the progress on the selected thematic or category or axis, C, the objectives and methodology, as well as proposed activities, D, the foreseen activities with the timeline, and E, the technical team and the proposing organization. So this has to do with background information and working lines, for example. Thirdly, we have the impact and expected or obtained results. This has to do with the macro criterion. And this is the comprehensive application form in depth for those projects that have been shortlisted. Here you have a maximum of 4,000 words, 1,000 for each of the items. But it is not expected that projects deal with every single item. In this case, all what the criteria seek to achieve is to provide a guide for the groups that will be applied to the FRIDA program so that, in fact, you will be able to describe the project touching upon the different aspects that you might have, as well as the different challenges and needs of the organizations. In this case, we mentioned the geographical area, the population that will be benefited, other expected coverage. This would be, for example, a project that seeks to enhance a given aspect. Then we have the technical development, for example, hardware, software, prototypes, or others, as well as specific material results to be achieved at technological level. Then improving the provided services. And finally, knowledge developments at practical level, for example, guides and methodologies, or also at academic level through papers, publications, or presentations and conferences, among others. And finally, as regards the third macro criteria, criteria, this has to do with continuity, sustainability, and replicability. In this case, there is a maximum of 4,000 words for each and 1,000 for each item. This is divided into one specific continuity plans for the project or also actions that have been planned or are in progress. Secondly, the use or application of the results in other contexts or in other geographical areas or in populations others than the initial target population. Thirdly, if there are partnerships with other institutions, those that have been generated or identified or are already operational. And fourthly, monitoring and evaluation. So the proposing organizations will carry out monitoring and evaluation of the stages of the project. In this second stage, there is also uh, a field for second order uh, criterion maximum of 4,000 words, uh, no, oh, 1,000 words, 500 for um, the uh, pers gender perspective. And finally, we request uh, a detailed uh, budget of the project. And with this, I want to thank you. Now I give the floor to Clara, who will uh, give you the second part of the presentation. Thank you. Well, as to the uh, considerations uh, to apply, some of the things that you have to consider is analyzing the description of uh, the uh, thematic categories or subcategories, such as the case of stability and security. Second, to 
to choose the thematic axis that is most associated to the project and to identify to the type of contribution or the support, either a grant or an award, depending on the characteristics and the modalities. As to the recommendations, to move forward in the formulation of the complete proposal after the closure of the current phase. Um, you should not complete all the fields. You need to, in this case, we have to consider the descriptions and you have to consider the descriptions of each item. You have to consider the capacity of the organization, organizations to implement the project and the activities in case they are selected and uh, to get uh, previous information on the internal mechanisms to receive financial assistance, signing of the agreement of the uh, deadlines, uh, terms, uh, etc. As to the frequent questions, the website includes a, a part for this. We uh, in the case of hardware and software, they must be uh, open source and uh, or uh, uh, open hardware. As to the budget, you must give the details of uh, the salaries of the team, professional services, our consultant fees, technical support, material, equipment, communications or dissemination, travels, per deems, uh, training, etc the dates of the call once again well the call was opened on uh, wednesday may 29th and the deadline to submit proposals or initiatives is friday june 28th uh, up to uh 23 uh, 59 minutes uh, utc minus three the announcement of the pre-selected projects will be on uh, friday August the 2nd, and the presentation of the detailed proposals, that is uh, the uh, projects that are pre-selected, will go from uh, Monday, August the 5th to Monday, August 26th, also with the same limit of time, 23, uh, 59 minutes, UTC minus three, and the announcement of the results will be on Wednesday, October the 2nd. And here we give you some important links for you to visit. There you will find any information you may need on the call and the program. The Frida.net on Frida, uh, programma Frida, not the net, sobre Frida. And then uh, you can uh, write to us at Frida at lacnic.net and our list, well, our mailing list is info Frida. Here it's HTTPS, uh, etc. This is a, a mailing list uh, in which you may receive all the news. So that was the presentation. We will now have uh, time for questions. I'm aware that there are already some in uh, the Q&A panel. So what we can do is uh, start answering them. So we're going to read them and answer them, answer them, and you may still write some more questions. Yeah. Let me read the first one of an anonymous attendee. It says, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the presentation. Now I have two questions uh, on this call. First of all, I'd like to know whether we can apply with strategies to approach the psychological uh, impact in situations of digital violence. And second, I'd like to know whether you accept as a project the request for funding technical consultancies uh, to implement security measures in our organization. The first thing that we can tell you here is that having heard the uh, thematic categories that we have, check uh, the uh, details uh, of each uh, category and the access that we have check whether that category is related so that you can present the project under one of those themes just uh, based on what i see now it's a project that could apply under free and open internet 
and if possible includes a technical uh, uh, yeah, if, if you can include the technical consultancies uh, yes you can include that in the budget yes of course i don't know whether you have any additional comments uh, alicia or should i go on no i just wanted to add that in the case of if in the in the case first question i think that the project could be also under digital inclusion so it all depends on how you express it and uh, the goals but as clara said yes it could be under open and free internet and uh, digital inclusion please check that thank you uh, mariana fernandez Peña says, could you tell us uh, the dates of the second stage? I imagine that she's talking about projects that are pre-selected. The deadline for submitting your detailed proposals. That starts on August the 5th. And uh, it, it ends, I don't remember the second date. Uh, yes, August 26th. Yes. Um, the projects will be invited to apply. Let me tell you that in addition to announcing the results of this first phase we are currently in, you will also be told that we will open the complete application form. Yes, it's also important to, to tell you that those that are pre-selected will be notified before publishing it in the internet. And uh, those will be uh, the projects that are invited to present the full proposals. Alicia Marina Alvarez said uh, that uh, unfortunately she had to leave, whether we could meet. Yes, of course, but we recommend you to see the session that is recorded because here we give a number of uh, examples, read the specifications and check the frequent questions. And if after that you have any questions, of course, we can talk it over. Then Herman Ferrero of Alter Mundi, thank you for organizing this webinar. We are a community network, Los Molinos, uh, Cordoba. This is a rural area, low income. Our goal is that all the families in our town may access the internet and the process uh, may also uh, result in uh, local jobs, sustainable jobs, and to expand the horizons of the people and to have the youth stay. We started working a year and a half ago and we have 50 families connected. Uh, we continue to grow. In our case, will it be better to get a grant or an award? In any case, will it be better to do it under connectivity and access to the internet or free and open internet? Well, we know Alter Mundi. Yes, we've already had a nomination and application of that organization. And we understand that it would apply under the uh, category connectivity and access to the internet but it will depend on what you emphasize in your project and your goal that may determine uh, where to uh, apply if you want uh, any further discussions if you want to receive more detailed advice we can also do that and about the other question whether it would be better to apply for a, a grant or an award. Well, as Alessia was saying earlier, the grant is given to initiatives uh, or projects uh, that uh, won't last longer than 12 months. And uh, while the awards are a recognition to a project that may extend longer than that. 
it may have had an impact, but it may con either continue or have concluded. Uh, that doesn't matter. But it's a recognition. It's $10,000, while the grant is up to $30,000. So please consider that to see um, whether you want a grant or, or uh, an award. Juliet Munoz, good afternoon. I'd like to know whether two organizations in a partnership could apply for the same project or whether they should apply individually. There's no doubt that you can apply as a partnership. As we've said in other cases, it's a positive thing. It's favorable. When we evaluate the projects, it's good to have alliances with other organizations. So, of course, we invite you to do that. Good afternoon. What is the level of detail that you must reach when you detail the budget? Well, we explained it. Alessia explained it earlier. Actually, the level of detail, well, you can explain it in the narrative section if you wish. But the idea is, well, we have a spreadsheet uh, with uh, different uh, uh, sections. Uh, we saw that earlier in the presentation. I, Ali, do you have it there? Or, or if not, we can discuss it later in, uh, personally. Thank you. Well, you have salaries of the team, professional services, and there you include consulting fees, uh, technical support, uh, material and uh, equipment, communications, discussion of the project, uh, travels and uh, per deems, training, and others. These are the big sections that are included in the budget spreadsheet. Uh, let me go on. I don't want to skip any. So the subgroup Internet and Human Rights, would it be relevant for Frida to receive the analysis of the benefits and risks uh, that uh, migrants in transit face when using the Internet? Well, this question is rather specific. Whether it would be relevant for Frida to analyze the benefits and risks uh, of uh, the migrants uh, that the migrants face, well, it will depend on the project. If the proposal is uh, well presented and it's relevant, and the analysis of the risks and benefits that the migrants face, of course, it will be possible uh, for the jury that will be assessing the projects. That's what I can tell you now. Ali, would you like to add anything? Well, just that um, I, I wanted to highlight what Clara already said, but all the projects should be associated to the mission of the program. All the projects are relevant, all those that are relevant uh, are relevant if they seek to approach challenges and difficulties and uh, how to improve uh, the development uh, of uh, the internet at the regional level. Of course, the process or applying and the selection is a competition. As you know from previous editions, um, it's a process in which Many organizations apply with excellent quality projects, great technical quality. So quite obviously, the jury prepares a list and ranking the different projects, and they seek to consider all the different dimensions that we mentioned previously regarding the criteria. But yes, all the proposals are relevant for this program. 
Thank you, Ali. The next question is, should the budget consider co-funding by the applicant? And the answer is that the applications we receive and the projects that are co-funded, I assume that what the person is referring to is a project that receives funding from another organization. Normally that is carried out, that is done because we consult what is the overall budget for the project and what is the requested funding from FIDA. So the answer is yes. And also the difference between the organizations, the other organizations budget and the overall budget for this project. I hope I was clear with my answer. And <laughs> the next question is, in addition to the use and development of open and free code, is there some other consideration regarding the outcomes and potential commercial application? In my understanding, well, Ali, maybe you can help me out, Alicia. Well, no. The only requirements, in fact, are specifically of the open and free development. Good afternoon, everyone. Is a specific format for submitting proposals. It's just filling out the forms in the website. I'm not sure whether the person who's asking me is already familiar with this form. So the form slash report has a description, which is a technical description and also the financial. And the one on the budget that has to provide details on the requested budget and what will be then applied as we mentioned earlier today. This is a simpler form for the initial phase, which is then open until June 28th. And then those projects that are pre-selected will then include a more detailed report with a specific section on the budget. And Michelle is asking if there are minimum amount of months for the intervention. Well, I guess you are referring to the submission. So the duration of the project is also considered and it has to be consistent with the proposed activities as well as with the project's objectives, but we have no pre-established amount of months, but the maximum is 12 months. In the case of submitting this as a government, should this be based on some specific objective or could, be, could this be submitted for a province in the country? Well, in that sense, it could be perfectly well be presented by a province. And we do have previous cases related to this. In this case, I wanted to refer to the background information. We recommend you to access the website of frida.net. There you can see which were the projects that were selected already in the past for 2023 and the 2022, as well as previous years and what is now being implemented. And like Clara was saying, when we had the specific question from Artanuri, the important inputs could be provided for the application for the development of the project. Thank you. Another question as from what date the beginning of the project should be considered? And 
this would be from October onwards. Well, yes, in fact, we are having the initial meetings in the month of October, so mid-October. So the beginning of the project should be estimated for that month. Would this analysis be, be specifically for migrant women in transit and the risk associated to the lack of privacy and so on? This has to was is also related to another question asked previously, and also the risks associated to lack of privacy and receiving disinformation by the organized crime. This question was already answered, but if Judith Mariscal, if you would like to write to us at Frida's email and ask a more specific question on this topic, please feel free to do so and we can then assist you. So please feel free to write to us so we can discuss some of the details regarding your question. Thank you, Herman, for your clarifying this. I'm not in Altar Mundi, but we have the nickname. Manuel, could you please expand a bit if there are restrictions regarding some elements that can be included in the budget? For your reference, we are preparing a proposal on awareness raising, training, and capacity building. No, we have no limitations or restrictions on the elements to be included in the budget. We understand that you could expand as much as you wish. So for us and for the jury, even better, this will contribute to better understanding this. So welcome to so. Jose Fantasia, good afternoon. I'd like to ask two things, if there are any limitations regarding the budget percentages for each of the categories. For example, equipment, consultancy, and on the other hand, if funding can be given to the technical teams of the organization that submit this project. The first part of your question, no, we have no limitations in terms of the budget to be allocated to each section or item in the budget. And secondly, if you can fund the work of the technical team of the organization that is presenting this project, yes, that has been included in the project's budget. Another question, we are a university in Mexico that through a social and economic innovation lab support a project in a community. Can we submit this proposal in partnership with them or should they propose it and we are partners of that project? Alicia, maybe you can answer that question. Thank you. This will depend on the role that each has. This is regarding the project, the development and implementation of the project. So from the standpoint of the pro program, and this is something that I would like to highlight once again, and this is something that Clara was referring to in one of the questions. This is namely that one of the criteria that are considered and are then evaluated in the first order criteria, and this has to do with the continuity, sustainability, and the replicability of this proposal, are namely partnerships. So it is particularly relevant for the program that you can generate partnerships and alliances between different organizations. It's not a requirement, but if the proposal includes that, this could also be really an uh, enriching factor for this project. Now, regarding your specific question, this will largely depend, depend on the role of each of the organizations. But we would like you to understand the relevance of alliances and partnerships with other organizations for developing projects. 
And just to add on to one of the questions that were asked regarding the budget and the breakdown for the different items, let me highlight that the FRIDA program seeks to approach and generate a platform that allows the organizations and groups of experts at regional level, as well as the working teams, to face the challenges and needs that we have regionally in the context of the internet. It is therefore a fund that has different mechanisms. We seek to be as flexible as possible so that we can cover all the different needs. Thank you, Alicia. We are almost at the end of the allocated time for this webinar. We cannot take up more than one hour. Let me briefly check the questions we still have and go straight to the point. I don't want to skip any questions. I'm just going to read these and see which were answered already. From Oscar from Peru, we are interested in participating in digital inclusion. We have an idea for a project, which is create an application and so on. He's telling us about the proposal. And what we would recommend is that if you have any questions on the category, to which you should apply or regarding the focus of your project, please write to the address for this program so we can give you a customized reply. And he's also asking about an application and if it should be open source. And we answered that, yes, that is the case. Someone is writing from Cuenca and La Boca, Buenos Aires. The budget, should these be submitted in US dollars? Yes, the budgets should be presented in US dollars because that is the way in which Frida organizes its work. And as you are aware, the current monetary situation in Argentina is very bad. So taking that into account, will be will there be some instance for adjusting the budgets prior or after having been selected? Well, yes, we are aware of the situation in Argentina. But yes, budgets should be submitted in US dollars. We don't have the option of adjusting the project once the project has been approved. I guess that is the purpose of your question. Let me briefly check what else we have. Yes, we have a question on a project on smart virtual tutors based on AI to be for the section on digital inclusion. So what we recommend is to check out the different categories. There's one that is on AI applied to the internet and the network. So please check that out and the thematic categories. We have open and free internet, digital inclusion, so that you can then adjust your proposal. And as I already mentioned, please feel free to write to us. <clears throat> and is there a percentage allocated to administration costs? No. Should this application be submitted collectively or on behalf of the organization that will be the legal entity. No, we have had cases in the past where the proposing a organization, it is not a requirement that you should be a legal entity, but you can submit your application as a group, as a collective group, and you will be the implementation branch of this project and then for the next phase if you are pre-selected you can then start defining the legal entity that will be receiving this award or this grant and 
And I'm going to read out the next one. Can the project be focused on two communities? Yes, by all means. And the final question, Carlos is asking us to give them an example of a project for a, an award to distinguish what is um, grant and what is an award. So please read the description and you can also check in the website previously funded projects and what Frida has supported in previous years. And quite clearly we have grants and awards and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. These are all the questions we have so far and we are past three minutes, but we're very pleased for the questions we have received. I hope we were clear with our answers and we hope we were able to answer all your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And if you have additional questions during the preparation stage of the projects, please feel free to contact us at frida at lacnic.net. And also please visit the website and explore the website that has a lot of information. Thank you.